It was a pleasure. He was a very um, strong, powerful man of God himself. Um, I do thank him for the opportunity. Um, let me get this out of the way because these are some things that you must do. Um, whenever you preach, and you have to acknowledge people and do things. And because this is being videotaped, and because social media is scarce, uh, my young lady of my life is not here. So let me first of all give all honor and praise to God who is the head of my life. Um, thanks to him, there's only one thing that makes me happy, and that is the sweet Erica Lee Hutchinson was my wife for seven years. And, um, she is not, she is not here, um, but she is, uh, she is uh, doing some other ministry herself in another church. Um, so um, it is, I, my phone is on uh, Skype right now, so she can see me and I can see her. Um, amen. So uh, on top of that, I want to also thank those who came with me. We have some drum uh, we, These young people, these young people are very special to me in, in a powerful way. They know that um, a lot of them have to be my God's children, brothers, and sisters. We just have a great relationship, and I love each and every one of you guys. Um, and I thank God for what he's doing for you all, because uh, you're showing up just to come and exercise your talent that he gave you, that states that you love God, and that you will to show you the gift that he gave you. So once again, thank you. Um, we have a few other parents um, with us as well, and one of the councils of the organization. Amen. Um, Amen. And also, my brother, who looks like me, I, I consider myself better looking than him. Um, but my brother is sitting over here with his flag on. And, uh, and the top for him is uh, baby girl Elijah and Adrian and Bax is what we call the other gentleman that's the stepson. Amen. Be fruitful and multiply. And I must tell you that this will not be long, and the reason why it will not be long, 8.30 tonight, somebody say 8.30. 830. On NBC, there is a special presentation of uh, the Philadelphia Eagles beating the North Carolina Panthers that will be on, that I must get to on my 64-inch TV so that I can enjoy that, amen. So my Sunday will go down on a great day. Not a good day, but a great day. I do have faith. Besides the mustard seed, amen. Uh, there is a word from the Lord. Uh, I invite you to, uh, and I was smiling when I heard the, uh, the scripture because it's kind of, one of those things where you get a confirmation from God that what you were going to preach about is what it is. Um, let me tell you all something. You see me right here in this suit, and you may say, well, wow, well, he's a man of God, been there all his life. But the answer to that is no. Um, no, I haven't. Um, as a matter of fact, I consider myself one of God's miracles because uh, when I was younger myself, I, uh, I had my own handbook of life. So, to speak. so I did what I wanted to, went where I wanted to go. Um, one of the young ladies with us said she do what she pleases. That's sort of what I do. I do as I did as I please. And uh, it took it took it took me losing my mother to really realize that there was something better to life than what I was doing. So I really thank God, and I just want you to understand that me standing here is a testimony to myself. And every time I preach. I'm preaching because I'm preaching to myself, not just to me, but to myself. Because we have to remind ourselves that it was only God who made us to put us in the positions that we are in. Amen. I invite you all to turn your Bibles or hope to take out your phones if you have them to turn to Philippians 3, uh, yeah. 7 through 14. We're going to yeah. look at Philippians 3, 7 through 14. I'll ask you to stand as we read the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be reading out of the English Standard Version. Um, it says, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and counted as rubbish, 
in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his suffering, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Now that I've already, not that I've already attained this for and already perfect, but I press on to make it my own. Because yeah. Christ Jesus has made me his own. Yeah. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me yeah. and straining forward to what lies ahead of the head, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you can have the world, you can have the world. But, just, but just give me Jesus. You may be seen. Young people, in the time, in the day, and in the age in which we live in, these, these perilous times, the last and evil days, we have forgotten about Jesus. Somebody's going to help me out with this afternoon. But out of all the things we go through and experience, and out of all the trials and tribulations that we encounter in our lives, instead of using those situations and use those encounters and experiences to glorify and lift up the name of Jesus, we use those situations and we begin to doubt. We begin to operate in disbelief. And we allow our flesh to take control. And we allow our flesh and allow the enemy to tell you that there is no need to have faith. There is no need to keep believing and trusting in God. Because if he hasn't brought you out yet, what makes you think he's ever going to bring you out? But I just stopped by here this afternoon to tell somebody that we must remember and take hold of the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because there is power in his name. Yeah. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Yes, Many times, young people in this day and age, we see so many preachers and people, uh, so many believers and Christians chasing out the titles, chasing out the positions, oh, and chasing out the leadership roles, and chasing out to be in the spotlight, and chasing out to be in front and center, chasing out to be well known like Betty Watt and J. Cole in August Alcina, and to be well known for having the most Instagram followers and the best kick group chat, chasing out to be well known and well loved to be uh, looked up to and have the best smartphones that are out there from the Samsung Galaxy S6 to the iPhone 6S. But we have forgotten to be chasing after God. <laughs> have we forgotten to be chasing after the glory of God? What has happened to the body of Christ? What has happened to the kingdom? But what Paul was simply saying in this text this evening is that you can have the title, you can yeah. take that. The fame, you can have that too. You can have all the money. You can take the houses. You can take all of it because just give me Jesus. Yeah. And it's really strange because Paul, before he was converted to Paul, he was known as Saul of Tarsus. Am I right about it? Yeah. And Paul of Tarsus was born in Tarsus, and both of his parents were Hebrew. And some people think that they were Pharisees, but at the age of 14, Paul was sent to Jerusalem Eat. to be taught by Camellia, a all Pharisee. Right. He was a doctor of the law, uh -huh. and Paul was trained to be a rabbi. Yeah. Paul was trained at a very early age to be a rabbi. And after studying up and reading on some things, the Jewish customs, they read out of the Torah. And they don't even have 10 commandments. They have 613 commandments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Paul, at a very early age, studied all 613 of those commandments. We have a hard time with 10, amen. amen. But only, not only did he study them, but he had to memorize them because rabbis were used to it being able to answer questions. Yeah, yeah. If a person had a question about something, well, what is the Torah about or anything like that, the rabbi had to be able to answer the question right at the top of their head. And Paul knew all 613 of these commandments. But then in this letter to the Philippian church, he said, I give it all up and count it all laws for Christ. Yeah. So what Paul was simply saying in all of that is, the knowledge that I obtained from the Jewish custom, all those commandments I had obtained from the Jewish customs, I gave it all up and counted as laws for Christ. And you just couldn't become a rabbi. You couldn't just wake up one morning and want to be a rabbi and take the position of a rabbi. Rabbis went to school, they ended up getting a the diploma, they had to go to the seminary, they had to get degrees, and then they proceeded to become rabbi. Doesn't that sound like many of us today? We go to our schools, we high schools, and get our diplomas, and Go to college and get your degrees, your M-D-I-V, D-E-I-V, Ph.D. Come on, talk to me, somebody. We get Reverend, Doctor, and Bishop on the front of our name goes to get 
about Christ. All right. I don't think y'all hear me in here, but we buy nice Mercedes Benzes and we buy the nice BMW and we love the new Lexus. We love the six, seven, eight, nine, ten bedroom houses. Young people, you know, we love the design of clothes like True Religion, Prada, and shoes like George James Timberland. And let's not forget about those nice Gucci belts and a North Face jacket. But what happened to Jesus? All right. We realize today that Jesus is all we need. The Bible lets us know to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all other things will be added to you. And there's nothing wrong with driving around in a nice car. There's nothing wrong with living in a nice house. There's nothing wrong with having degrees and education. There's nothing wrong with watching empower and power. But what are you using it for, amen? amen? Are you using it to build up the kingdom of God? Or are you using it to put your name out there? Come on, talk to me somebody. In the, in the first six verses, I didn't read about read it, but Paul then opened his letter and said to the Philippian church, Rejoice in the Lord. And he said, To write these same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you to, for you it is safe. Paul said, beware of dogs. Whoa, come on now. That, that's, 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 that's what the word says. He yeah, says, yeah. Beware of dogs. Beware right. of evil workers. Beware. B-E-W-A-R-E, beware. Paul was giving them a warning. Paul was saying, beware, because everything that glitters ain't gold. <laughs> Paul was saying, beware of the grass is not green on the other side. Paul said, beware. I'm warning you now that don't fall for the tricks and the schemes of the enemy. Beware of these dogs. And evil doers. Yeah. Somebody got some dogs uh, in their life. Somebody got some low down, dirty dogs. Why is that my boy? That's cool. Even in the church house, y'all won't hear me in here. Somebody deal with evil co workers, evil friends, and classmates every day. Come on, talk to me, somebody. But Paul said, Beware, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. What Paul was saying was, Don't exalt the flesh. Don't have confidence yeah. in the flesh. Don't trust and depend on the flesh. But put your trust in who? God. Jesus. Yeah. He said no confidence in the flesh because the flesh will let you down every single time. The Bible, the Bible lets, us, lets us know that our flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Yeah. So Paul says have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think of that he has confidence in the flesh, I more. What Paul was simply saying in the fourth verses is, though you may think you have more confidence in the flesh than I have more, Paul was simply telling these people, you may think you got it going on, but let me tell you something. Hold up, wait a minute, I got something to tell you. Paul says, let me tell you about my past circumcision, the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, the yeah. Hebrew of Hebrew. Yeah. Paul was simply saying, compared to me, y'all ain't got nothing. Paul was saying, y'all don't even know half of what I know. Paul says, I've gone to the training. I've got the education. I've got the diploma. Yeah. I've got the degrees on all my walls. I've got the titles in front of my name. I've got it all, he said. I'm the Hebrew of Hebrews. I'm at the top. I'm on the A-list. I'm on the VIP. I'm cookie on Empire. I'm the most important. History says Paul's countrymen knew him. Yeah. When Paul showed up on the scene, you know, everybody knew him. This is Paul. They would say, all hell saw. Well, come talk to me, somebody. Everybody know who he saw was. Yeah. He said, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. And he said, concerning the law of Pharisee, I knew everything. I was trained by the best of the best. I got trained at an early age. I continue going on. I know everything just about. And then he said, concerning zeal, you know, I persecuted the church. Oh, I got that too. So Paul was saying, giving these people a brief testimony about his past. He said, persecute the church, touch the righteousness which is in the law, blindness. I was blameless, I was innocent, I was faultless. If anybody thought wrong with me, then they were wrong. Because Paul said I was blameless, I did nothing wrong. Come talk to me, somebody. Paul said I did nothing wrong. What could you possibly blame me for or fault me for? I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. Paul said I walked around, I had the status. I had people waiting on me hand and foot. I did all that. I had people washing my clothes, washing my dishes, cooking me dinner. I had everything. That's what's wrong with a lot of preachers and bishops and doctors and prophets and prophets. They got folks doing everything for them, and they are well known, and they throw out rose petals for them. You would think Jesus was coming to town because we have a God. A lot of people, 
so if they stay on the top of the list, everybody knows who he is. They, everybody goes to his concerts, his buys his tapes and CDs, but let me tell you something, I don't care how good the CD or tape is, I don't care if you preach the best sermon of the year, you get a plaque for it, it was the best sermon of the year, but if Jesus wasn't in it, that message was all of the So, 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 so Paul said that that's what I was used to. Yeah. I used to be confident in the church, in the right. flesh. I used to persecute the church. Paul said I'm a Hebrew and a Pharisee. I knew everything about the Jewish customs. I had it made. Yeah. Paul had it made. He could get whatever he wanted. He was not Paul at the time, but he was Saul. So in this letter, he was trying to tell the church of Philippi a little bit about Saul. And in verse 4 and 5, he told him a little bit about Saul. Yeah, he told him that who told Saul was, and how he used to be, how he used to act. But then in verse 7, Paul says, that was Saul. Yeah. Let me introduce you to the new man. Let me introduce you to the apostle Paul. Yeah. Let me introduce you to the new preacher. Yeah. Old things have passed away, yeah. and behold, all things have become new. Uh -huh. Let me introduce you to this new, new man. I don't do things I used to do. Excuse me. I don't go places I used to go. I don't say things I used to say. I don't act the way I used to act. My name has been changed. Y'all yeah. don't hear me in here. Yeah. My attitude has changed. My walk has been changed. My life has been changed. Look over and tell somebody a wonderful change has come over me. Young people, this evening, we've got to learn how to accept change. We have to learn how to be willing to change. We have to be receptive of change. Because God is looking for some saints who are in dying need of change. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You know, when a baby wets his pamper, they mess the pamper up. And All right. The baby will cry. And yeah. They'll call and scream like crazy. So sometimes you change them. Now, some kids may sit there and be quiet, and they get very quiet because they don't know what's going on. But we need some young people who will cry and holler, Lord, change me. Change me. I, yeah. I, I can't stand this mess no more. Yeah. Change me. Change me. Yeah. I can't stay like this no more. Change me. You walk around society with this mess and society, you know you walk around in mess and you walk around in it too long. If a baby walks around in a, in a, in a mess too long, they end up getting a rash. Oh. We have started getting spiritual rashes. Lord, you know, Lord. Why is my credit? Uh, why am I in debt? Why am I losing my house? Why don't others like me? Why is all this stuff happening to me? Well, that's your spiritual rash. You've been walking around in mess long enough. Yeah. You've been trying to keep it together. But now is the time that you need to say, God, I need to be converted. God, I need to be changed. Yeah. I need you to get me out of verse 4, 5, 6 and step into verse 7. Amen. So Paul was talking about his old man. He was talking about the flesh in verse 4 and 5. And then 6, but in verse 7 he says that things were gained to me. Those that count lost for Christ. So Paul was saying that that stuff that Babylon taught me, all those 613 commands I studied and memorized, all those Jewish customs and everything, I counted loss for Christ. All right. We got under, we got to understand this evening that if you want to follow Christ, then you're going to have to lose some stuff. You know, it, he said in his word that if any man wants to follow after me, he's got to take up his cross and follow me. In order to follow Christ, some things you just got to let go, but you just can't stop there. Uh, it hurts young people, but some people you gotta let them go. But if you're accustomed and comfortable sitting in the same pew every week, and you keep wondering why you go to church and you receive nothing, why you hear a preacher and the singing and you receive nothing, you come empty, leave empty. Maybe there's some folks in the section that you're sitting in. Amen. You uh -oh. count. You gotta count it all off. And when you think of burden, and I met my mind to some people when they saw that Paul was changing from Saul to Paul, they were like. So you got to be more funny, you got to be different. What's going on with you? Some, something's just not the same, it's different. I can't put my finger on it. You're not the same soul, what is it? You're a different man. What's going on, do you need to tell me something? Paul probably just simply said, I counted loss. I, Paul said, I, I got the real deal, I've been searching. I thought what I had was good. I thought what I was doing great and perfect. I thought I had it going on, but then I found a man. And I had it. 
people were saying, what do you mean you found a man? Have yeah. you lost your mind? Yeah. And gave us something probably. He said, no, no, I lost my mind. That, this mind being you, uh -huh. which is also in Christ Jesus. Yeah. You've got 